Welcome to our YouTube service for Sunday, April 11th, 2021, the second Sunday of Easter. It's good to have you with us again, and as we um, look at the Lord's resurrection and some resurrection appearances, uh, we will be celebrating communion later in the service today, too. Mike, last uh, week was quite a week, huh? Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, you had a busy week, and we, we did all of our services live, and I, and I have to tell everybody watching this week, uh, the reason we did them all live last week is I didn't want Pastor to have to do six church services plus <laughs> a wedding <laughs> over a one, yeah. two, three, four day period. So yeah. we did them live. We did Thursday, Friday, and then you had uh, a wedding on Saturday, and then of course Easter Sunday. And I think all in all, it went pretty well. It was different being here live for me. I, I will admit, okay. it was a different ball game, yeah. and and I don't know, <laughs> everything went wrong from my <laughs> end. Technology and the the screens were lagging and mm. causing a problem, and yeah. Ah, so Just, here we are. We're well, recording ahead we'll, of, we'll ahead of time. We'll see what we can do this time. Now, you had your second shot a week ago today. Yes, I had my second shot um, last Saturday. Yeah. And uh, I, how, how do I put this to you folks? I, I powered through it. How about that? I, with, with my side company, my sound company, if I have a booking, I can't call in sick. And I've been sick before and have had to plow through it. So I went home after getting my shot, and I raked the yard, and I assembled some equipment, and I'm going to show you some of that here with some pictures that I have. And uh, I just kept going and going. Yeah. And then we did the church service here, and I kept going and going, and I went to the compost pile and going and going. And it was about Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. <laughs> I had to take a nap. <laughs> well, I was, I've been catching up on some sleep, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. And I had my second, I'm two weeks out now oh, from my second shot. Awesome. And my thing, I had some headaches when I'd wake up. Well, that's, that's that just the thing. Remember, I told it, you yeah. months ago, a couple months ago, that I hit my head at work and I had a concussion and I've had some yeah. neck pain. I've had a headache for two months, so I don't oh. know if I had a yeah, COVID headache or not because yeah. I've had a headache, okay. but I, I did feel really tired. Um, I'll tell you, Thatcher just got his shot. He's home this weekend. He just got his shot at 1230 today, so we'll see oh, how he does okay. in the next 24 okay. hours. Well, good. I'm glad that he's able to get it, too, and you have some pictures I for have us. pictures, and I warned okay. everybody. I told you, if no one, <laughs> if no one was going to send me anything, I was going to share my life with you. Uh, so we're going to do that. I will say, Bob, and uh, oh, this is the problem with weekends. Uh, the Pownells, the Pownells okay. sent some pictures from Good. Arizona, so um, we can get keep connected the miles. Uh, yes. From the so miles. let me pull myself off of here, and I'm going to pull up the computer. Uh, so when I told you I powered through COVID, I really did. So uh, I purchased my wife a new swing for the front patio, <laughs> and that is it. I assembled that after getting my shot. Uh, and then I, well, it's kind of, oh, it's doing that again. Uh, this is my new smoker grill that I purchased. And I assembled that after getting my COVID shot. <laughs> so <laughs> I just kept going, and I, and I raked, and I raked, and I did all kinds of stuff. I, I love this. I, I'll show you. I've used it a couple of times. It's so much fun. It's a, a pellet smoker. Uh, I have three different smokers now, plus a grill. I know it's probably driving my wife nuts. But there's just some different shots. I apologize. The computer's really lagging here today. Uh, there <laughs> okay. is... If you're the, hungry. <laughs> yeah, so this is a beef tri-tip I made earlier in the week, and it was delicious. Once again, it's lagging. We <laughs> so we're getting all sides of yeah, this Yeah, it, it's, it's going from left, and then it's jumping to the right. And, okay. and then, so this was today's lunch. Um, I made ribs for everybody. So I got up at 4.30 this morning. It's Saturday, folks, by the way, and 
I uh, got up at 4.30, warmed up the smoker, got everything ready, put the ribs on at 6, and we ate at 12.30. Oh, wow. So, so you uh, guys really had a feast. Yeah, we did. Uh, I figured Thatcher's home, and I have a new toy, so I wanted to cook on it. Now, Ponell's. They sent pictures from Arizona. And wh why am I thinking, okay, it's Bob. Bob and Donna. Donna. I almost said Deb. <laughs> I'm sorry, Donna. It's, I, you know, I'm going to blame the ribs. They were really good, and my brain is in a little bit of a box. So, <laughs> you so uh, they, they said things are in full bloom in the desert. So they sent some yeah. pictures in. There's a cactus. That's really pretty. And why did... Okay, my pictures jump around. Her pictures just come up perfect. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> You're shrugging your cell shoulders. Phone. <laughs> who, who knows? And yeah. here's another cactus that's in bloom from yeah. Arizona. And then I wanted to talk about this. I wish the picture was bigger. Oh, I, I really do. Um, I just wanted to send some prayers out to a, a personal friend of mine and uh, a family. So this is Dick and Donna Fadgen. It's an older photo. Uh, I grew up living next door to Dick and Donna. Dick was the Beetle County Extension agent for many, many, many years, and he lives, lived next door to my mother. Now, him and his wife moved to Minneapolis to be closer to their kids a few years ago, and unfortunately, Dick passed away a few years ago. Okay. Um, well, this week, Donna passed away. And, you know, these were those neighbors of mine that, uh, well, they were like having grandma and grandpa next door. You know, they always had treats, and they let us romp through their yard, even though he was a master gardener and uh -huh. probably hated us running through his yard. Uh, he never once got cross, and uh, their their granddaughter, Anne, is a good friend of mine. She she sings in New York City in the Metropolitan Opera. Oh, she's, Opera. she's the one that's she's your the Metropolitan one. So Opera Her person. grandmother passed away this week, and I just want to okay. send my sympathy and condolences. I know some people in Huron probably knew them okay. or knew of them. They, they were long, long time Huron residents. And like I said, he was the extension agent uh, through SDSU in Beetle County. Oh, so okay. um, I just wanted to send my condolences and prayers out to their family during this time. She was in her early 90s. I mean, she lived a very long life and was a, a wonderful woman, a very gentle woman, and she volunteered at the Senior Center, Meals on Wheels, uh, Sons of Norway, Daughters of Norway. I mean, she did a lot. So, condolences. And I think, Pastor, that's all I have right now. Okay. I know, really long, really long intro today. Folks, thank you for bearing with us. And, okay. um, yeah, for sure. On with for the sure. worship, Pastor. Um, to get us into our service for today, um, the Doubting Thomas passage, and this doubting has been forever with poor Thomas. But um, to th uh, what the caring conversation for us, think or talk about something you need to see in order to believe it is real. And what does the expression, seeing is believing, mean for you? And Jesus wants us to see with the eyes of faith. How is that possible for us? So with those being kind of the groundwork for our service today, we begin as we consider thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cold water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit 
in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn, Christ is Alive, let Christians sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'll be doing the readings this week, but I'm hoping that I can um, encourage someone else to do the reading on YouTube and so we can get more input now that <laughs> things are hopefully more back to quote-unquote normal as normal as we can for now with COVID-19 still in our wake. Our first reading from Acts 4 is, um, why, is for us, before us while the apostles testified to others about the resurrection of Jesus, the early Christian community shared what they owned or sold, their possessions to help their fellow believers who were in need. The writer Luke tells us, now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they held, owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought, bought the proceeds, brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm, Psalm 143. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. 
It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Here ends our psalm. Our second reading from the first, chap- first and second chapters of First John. In introduction, the opening of this letter serves as a reality check. The reality of God is light, but our confessed reality has been sin. God cleanses us from our sinful reality through Christ's death so that we live in fellowship with Christ and walk in God's light. St. John shares this with us. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it, and we testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you that we ha- what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel is a continuation of the Easter story. It continues, it's from John 20. It continues as the risen Jesus appears to his disciples. His words to Thomas offer a blessing to all who entrust themselves in faith to the risen Christ. And we realize that in the telling of it, this is the um, gospel for every second Sunday of Easter in our, in our church, in our lectionary time. And it's, we keep on telling it to help faith stay alive for us. We need to keep telling the story. St. John writes in chapter 20, beginning at verse 19, When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them, saying, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. 
If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came that first night. The other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples again were in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus then said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now I... I'm going to share that story again with our World Bible Story book. And so we have our, our little characters with us again, asking those maybe obvious questions, hopefully some of the questions that you may have. And, uh, and to make it a little bit more, maybe also lighthearted, but maybe realistic for us too. And so the story title is, Thomas wonders. Slam went the door. Click went the lock. No one coming in. No one going out. Ten of Jesus' disciples were hiding in a house. One of the disciples that were still living, remember Thomas, uh, Judas Iscariot died, but Thomas was the one that wasn't there now from the other eleven. The disciples were afraid. Jesus died on a cross. Would they come to be killed too? Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the locked room with them. Peace be with you, he said. The disciples stared. Their mouths dropped open. Could it really be Jesus? Jesus smiled as he showed them his hands. They saw the holes from the nails. Jesus, it is you. The disciples were shouting. Whoosh. Jesus breathed his spirit on them. Go tell everyone I'm alive. Take my spirit with you. One of the things that I've been wondering sometimes is, what did Jesus' breath smell like? Could it be smelled? <laughs> but whoosh, with Jesus' spirit on them, he says, Go tell everyone I'm alive. Take my spirit with you. And so the question for us, who can you tell about Jesus? And so we have the pictures of what had happened in our, our little characters saying, how could Jesus get in a locked room? And then the other one says, Jesus came back from the dead, and you're thinking about how he could get into a locked room? <laughs> yeah. Well, ten disciples were ready to tell, but one disciple, Thomas, wasn't in the house that day. He didn't see or hear Jesus. When the disciples saw Thomas, they shouted, Jesus is alive. What? Thomas wondered. I won't believe it until I see Jesus and I can touch his hands with my finger. Well, a week later, all of Jesus' disciples were back in the house. Thomas was with them this time. Suddenly, Jesus appeared. Peace be with you, he said. Thomas, touch my hands. Believe. Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. 
Jesus blessed everyone who has not seen him, but still believes. Our little characters, does that blessing include people who don't believe today? And the other one says, yes, it includes everyone who believes. Well, who believe, and I don't think I said don't believe, but it is for for believers to today, and that's why we believe that that was entered in the, in our Bibles for the sake to help us who have not seen yet now believe. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we know that it is so hard when we cannot see, when we cannot touch. We sometimes have a harder time believing. But Lord, we pray. Help us in our unbelief, but help us through the stories that we can come to believe. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I think it's really a good thing that the scripture writers did include, of course, the resurrection stories of how the people saw Jesus after he was resurrected, but also the honesty in looking at it. Looking at it as one who denied this Thomas. One of the things in our um, Gather Bible study that's being stressed is that in our Bibles, the stories of our matriarch and patriarchs, we get the negative thing about the, our forerunners in the faith, in that they had trouble with belief of things that God had told them, they have trouble with understanding what God tells them. It's honest about it. But in our lives today, the political leaders, all of the political, or many of them, I know it's not quite all of them, but many of the political leaders, everybody wants to back him and not, not show that they're back, that they, are, they have some negative characteristics too. It's helping, I think, what the Bible is trying to do is to help us to realize that these are human beings, just like you and I. What would we do if somebody died and we knew that they were dead, dead, and they came back to life? We would question it, wouldn't we, and wonder if, unless I am there. A big disruption happened. They loved Jesus, and they thought he was the one that was to come, the Messiah. He died. And then another strange thing happens when he resurrects. Nobody had ever resurrected from the dead before. Thomas wasn't there that first time. He is filled with doubt. And please note, Jesus does not turn Thomas away nor are any of us turned away when we are filled with doubt. Doubt and the admitting of it, I think, are very important for our lives of faith. Doubt is a natural, natural response to tragedy and evil. It's not the last response, but if we do not re make room for our doubt, it is more difficult for us in our life of belief and our daring to share our faith, saying to somebody who may be doubting, yeah, I did too, and this is how I thought about it, and then this is how I've come to believe in a different way, so we can share the truth of our reality. Doubts grow in our lives. In our younger years, it seems as though it's more easier to ask questions. And I truly believe how people responded to us when we asked those questions and, and entered into those doubts uh, 
is how we may feel free to ask questions and share our doubt as we get older. As we age, it may seem more difficult to admit the questions and the doubts. At the center of our doubt is the question of the reliability of that risen Jesus Christ. Thomas was a follower of Jesus. He had given himself over to the mission and work of Jesus. Of course, Thomas was not quite aware of how much that mission might cost. When Jesus began his walk back to Jerusalem, the disciples knew that this was dangerous for Jesus. They tried to make him not do that. But Thomas stood up in front of his brothers in the faith and said, let us also go that we may die with him. Thomas was somewhat aware of the risks that came with following Jesus, where while we do not know quite where Thomas was that first evening, he may have thought all was done. He may have just kind of given up because of Jesus' death. Thomas may be devastated, and he was filled with fear and pain. When the other disciples then told him that Jesus was alive and that they had seen him with their own eyes, of course, Thomas doubted. He was struggling with the trustworthiness of God in the midst of it all. It's, and that's found in his statement, unless I see the nail holes in his hands, put my finger in those nail holes, and stick my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe. Based on what Thomas knew, based on his experience of death and grief, doubt was now the reality of his faith. Even though Thomas had a heavy dose of doubt mixed in with his faith, Jesus does not reject him. Jesus does not cut him off. In fact, Jesus does the complete opposite. Eight days later, when the disciples were together, Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the locked doors again and gave them peace. And then he went over to Thomas. Jesus met Thomas right where he was and invited him to touch the wounds, saying, Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas wants proof of the resurrection. Proof of Jesus' existence, according to Peter Marty, and I think it's a decent statement. Peter Marty says, proof of God's existence is a fool's errand. But what Thomas' experience is, is Jesus' presence. Thomas did not only get proof, but he got Jesus' presence. What we desire so deeply in our lives when they have been disrupted is God's presence. God's presence in all that we do. God does meet us with the promise of being with us always. Jesus' mission here is in our midst and all of the world God loves and desires to redeem and restore. The mission of Jesus is coming full circle in this meeting with Thomas and extends to all of us today. God in Jesus knows Thomas' darkness and doubt. God in Jesus knows our darkness and doubt. When Jesus invites Thomas to touch his wounds, Jesus confirms for Thomas and for us that life-changing resurrection drew up the wounds and weariness that Thomas and all of us carry. That is what Thomas discovered when Jesus entered that locked room. Thomas could have already decided his, that his faith struggles and keeping a distance. His doubt would keep him outside of the resurrection community of the body of Christ. But Jesus' words and Jesus' blessing of peace said otherwise. Jesus is not separated from us. 
The power of the Holy Spirit is always moving toward us, overcoming the distance, restoring us, being present with us and fulfilling the promise spoken by the prophet Isaiah when Isaiah writes, the Lord will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our hymn of the day, we walk by faith. Now I invite you to join me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we consider our prayer concerns um, for today, I need to add Ron, our member Ron Kerr to it. He ended up falling yesterday and breaking a bone in his ankle. So please do remember Ron in your prayers for healing. And I have added a former member, um, Darwin Sauer, to our prayer list. Darwin was involved in a tragic accident with a semi. Um, and has lots of healing to go through. He's under medical care for, he's going to be under medical care for a long time. So I invite you and encourage you to please do remember him in prayer. And Donna Knight died this past Wednesday. Um, her funeral is going to be at Coolers this coming Thursday. So please remember Donna's family in prayer too. As we are alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we now bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. Lord God, 
you shower your church with grace. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation, restore waters, clean the, cleanse the air, provide revitalizing moisture to parched earth. Lord, we thank you for the rains that we have had. We pray for continued favorable weather. We pray that you will help those who make their living off the land to get the adequate rest they need so that they can plant the seed and may the atmosphere for the seed bring it to fruit. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, direct all the nations. Guide all in authority that they shepherd their peoples in ways of your love. Defeat our impulse for war. We pray that you be with all of our military personnel. We especially lift up Michael, Sean, and Dane as they serve you and our country. Bestow the peace of Christ upon all in authority. Breathe upon them your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we may provide for the needs of others. We especially remember Ron and Darwin. We lift up Jeremy, Earl, Pastor Heidi, Kathy, Pastor Zachariah, Jerry, Betsy, Patricia, Lila, Jordan, Dee, Aurora, Dwayne, Mackenzie, and all we now lift up before you in our hearts. Lord God, announce your peace to all who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you give us fellowship with one another in this faith community called Our Savior's Lutheran Church. And we lift up all of our members and we highlight our postcard ministries. We remember Sarah and Tegan Radke and Craig and Judy Rurick. We pray that you work with them and us to shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in your, in your care. We lift up the families of Donna Knight and Marianne Denkel. We pray that you be with all of us as we are united with them in the resurrection hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-failing goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with those who are worshiping with you today. And I invite you to uh, have your communion elements at hand. And now 
we remember, you know, we're on the other side of that day, but we still remember the good things that happened because of how what Christ did for us. So we remember that night in which he was betrayed. He took bread, gave thanks, and gave it for all. Get saying, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Then in the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, In this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith and a life everlasting. Amen. Receive the benediction. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Jesus, the God of life. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to um, consider our announcements for the coming week. Um, I need two people who are willing to be Synod Assembly delegates. And we're looking at, if anybody is interested, it's going to be all online, okay? If anyone is interested in coming to the church, Mike tells me that we should be able to put it up in the fellowship hall. Yeah. So it's the first uh, weekend first Friday and Saturday of June. Sorry, I don't have the dates right in my mind, but anyhow, think about it and see if you're willing. Those of us who will be voting, we may have to do something a little different, but we'll, we'll have to figure that one out in time, too. Um, I, I would volunteer, and I just realized that I think that's the weekend of Wheel Jam in here. <laughs> well, of so course. I think I'll be pretty busy. <laughs> so we're going to have to get that set up in the, in the yeah. fellowship hall ahead of time. Okay. Just yeah, it in. starts, I think, around noon on Friday. When is, yeah, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to talk done. about we'll that. We'll try to figure it out. And maybe, maybe this person here can maybe even figure <laughs> <laughs> with your tutelage and we maybe can get her figured out. Or maybe there might be somebody else in the congregation who might be able to follow instructions for technology. Yeah. So. Um, Pastor, before you go on, and you might have some more announcements here. Yep. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your camera and I'm gonna bring it out a little bit here. Uh, I was curious the the flowers that are behind the altar and then the flowers that are left and right of the altar. Did anyone give those this year or? They're what they are. Yeah, they're yeah, they, hydrangeas. The hydrangeas in the fr are the hydrangeas in the front. Now are the ones in back are those real? No. No, those are <laughs> Those don't need to be watered. <laughs> <laughs> but the hydrangeas up front, did, did you bring those in? Or? We Here, let me... got them. Vanessa ended up buying them. Lewis Drug had them. She got them right away, and there weren't any more left. But, but they in. are um, in memory of, I think it's Frank and Doris Pearl. I always get the husband wrong, but, but they are um, in memory of them. Um, we decided not, since I have so much trouble with Easter lilies, we decided to do it this way. Hopefully next year we'll get back to doing, maybe encouraging people to bring or to have other kinds of flowers. This, this was the first Easter live that my, I didn't go home with my eyes watering. The Easter lilies <laughs> caused my allergies to freak out. Too, yeah, so. I, it, it adds to my allergies <laughs> big time. So, I, so we decided not to do much with it this year, but hopefully next year we're going to be able to do more foliage and not Easter lilies, but yeah. Oh, okay. So I, that's, that's why. Uh, do you have some more announcements? 
Yeah, just wanted to highlight the endowment committee is going to be meeting tomorrow morning at 8. So Sunday morning, obviously, we're doing this on Saturday. And then we're going to be starting Sunday school. So if you have kids that are interested in Sunday school, please bring them. I'm going to stick my neck out and do it for a while anyway. I know I need to connect with Jake to see where things are at. This is the last um, weekend for We Found Sound. Oh, and yes. I'm sure Jake is involved in that, so I haven't even <laughs> touched that one. But hopefully next week maybe he'll... I've got to connect with him. But, but anyway, I am planning to do some Sunday school stuff. So, so please feel free to bring your children, and we'll see how <laughs> overwhelmed Pastor Joanne can be. Uh, okay. <laughs> And then we got, we're starting, we're doing Bible study, the April Bible study gather. If you don't have a book, please feel free to come. We've got them out there. And then April 18th, a week from Sunday, is the council meeting, and we're having worship, and then Sunday school again, so. And everything's still masked, I'm yep, assuming. Yep, we're still doing masking, and I, everybody was masked last Sunday. I just really deeply appreciate that. Even though we've had shots, there's still chances of stuff. <laughs> it's just better not to spread it until we're told yeah, we're and, gone. And we can still get it, even though we have a shot, but hopefully it won't be as bad. So. Yes, yes. And that's, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, a friend of mine in Sioux Falls became ill after getting his COVID shots. Yeah. He's one of the a, few, but he, he yeah, did come down with it. Still, he said it was very mild, but he's still... Yeah. Right it's again. still, yep, it's still such an alive virus. And then with its mutations, it just gets crazy. So, yes, we're still requiring masking and distancing. That will continue. So I have one more picture. Sometimes I find okay. things on Facebook or in social media that makes okay. me uh, want to share. And so I'm going to bring this one up. At the top it says, you are, and there's a bottle of Fanta. And then that little brown thing to the side is Dick. You are Fanta Dick. You are fantastic. Oh. <laughs> That's a message to everyone in the congregation. You're all fantastic. Yeah. See, I thought okay. that one was good. Okay. So. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay, people, please get your, get your pictures in. Show us wherever you may be show, watching us. And also... Um, if um, anybody is interested in reading for Sunday or for the YouTube service, please feel free to do that. And I'm thinking maybe sometime in the near future we might be doing Sunday morning readings again too. We'll just see how things go, knowing the shorter services. But anyway, with that, we will have our closing hymn, which is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you.